Yo, Elliot, I met a woman about six years ago at the gym I was working at that was five years older than me. I was 18, she was 23 at the time. I paid no attention to her as I felt I had no chance with older women and she was coming in regularly already with another dude I know. Uh, they lifted together. Three years ago, uh, three years go by and I see the same woman at a house party but with no man. We hit it off that night and eventually started dating. After six months, some incidents happened and she breaks up with me to apparently work on her mental health. It was devastating. After another six months, she comes back to me still having love for her. I let her back in. I later found out that she was actually in a secret relationship with that other dude prior to us and that during our six month breakup, she actually went to another state for a concert with that same dude. According to her, that whole event was forced and that relationship with him was abusive from the beginning. I also knew that the dude had a whole family on the side he was hiding from her. My problem is I can't get the thought of those events out of my head. It has affected my relationship with this woman for the past three years. It has affected how I respond to her and what has made me do things. It has made me do things I'm not proud of. I can tell she loves me, but I don't know if that's just me being too much in my head or something. I wish I just, uh, I just shouldn't have to deal with this regardless of what she says. Any advice? Okay. So there are a few things here that I want to address, but the very first of which is something that I think is going to come very easily to you. Your senses aren't wrong. And I did made a video last week speaking with someone who had a sense about something towards his wife, but he had zero evidence and there was zero history of her doing anything wrong. And I, and I tried to get through to him about not trusting his intuition. Don't trust your intuition. It's born of past the fruits of past trauma has nothing to do with your wife because there's no reason right you're making it up in your head and so the whole video was about don't trust your gut don't trust your intuition you need evidence for thin slicing i'm going to contradict myself completely right now <laughs> you know that that feeling you're having is due to a truth that you're trying to bury all the evidence is there from the get-go there's been plenty of evidence that this is not a good woman for you. Now, I'm not going to go into the whole philosophical reason why, right? All, all my reasons why dating an older woman is a bad idea, but that's the first red flag. Second red flag, you saw her, she was already with another man, right? So she's older than you. She was with another man for a long time, and she was probably with many men before that. So that's that can lead me down the rant about why I don't want women with a past. And I think we as men need to start holding women accountable for their past. Instead of saying, oh, it's okay, everybody has experiences. No, I don't need to deal with that. I don't have to tolerate that. I can get with a younger woman that has no past. So older woman, experienced woman, has a past, right? These are all red flags. Then she leaves you, right, because she has... Mental health issues. Mental health issues for a woman doesn't mean anything. It means I can't come to the, I can't come honestly to you and tell you what's going on because women communicate in a covert way. They never tell you what's really going on. They get, they blame some disease, right? The two things that they blame on various bad decisions they make, and I'm not ranting on women, but this is their nature, is mental health, right? Which is garbage to me. Maybe I'm not sensitive. And uh, the other thing that she said, abusive. Abusive. Every man is abusive. Every man that I break up with, every man that I just happen not to like is abusive. There's women who would type in my comment section saying that I'm abusive because they don't like the things that I'm saying. They, they think I abuse my wife, <laughs> right? Because I have a patriarchal attitude towards this world because I'm a strong man. So I must be abusive, right? Abusive doesn't mean anything. It means I can't handle this man. It means he is too alpha for me and he's not giving in to my demands. He's not doing what I want. So he's abusive. So mental health and abusive. Woman to tell you about mental health, that's red flag number four. Red flag number five, she's talking about abusive. 
Red flag number six, she lied to you. And finally, red flag number seven, you can't get this out of your head because it's all toxic crap that you don't need to be dealing with. Here's just a little exercise you can try. Your intuition and your logic, your heart and your mind are telling you, this is a bad idea, bro. She's not the right one, bro. And I'm telling you as your advisor, this is not a good woman, bro, right? But I know that's hard. You know why I know that's hard for you? Because you're probably having sex with her. And when you have sex with a woman, you become addicted to her. This is why men put women on the pedestal. You can't see because of the sex goggles. You can't get over the oxytocin flood that happens every time you ejaculate with this woman. This is why I think fornication is a bad idea. Right? Most men can't see clearly when they're having sex with a woman that, they, that isn't within the bonds of protection, i.e. marriage. But even today, that's tough, right? Because these women can just go whenever they want. And we all know most divorces are initiated by women, right? So it's even harder for men. Women want us to be vulnerable, but the minute we're vulnerable, they get disgusted and then they, they turn away from us, right? So it's difficult for a man. I'm not going to go on too many... I'm not going to go down too many rabbit holes here with you because I'm sure you've watched enough of my videos and I just pointed out six things you need to dive into. You need to get a little bit more, you need to confront, but you can't deal with any of that as long as you're a drug addict and you're a drug addict right now. You can't see because of your PP. So my, my advice to you is to do an experiment. Stop having sex with her. Right? She left you for six months so that she can go and find herself and deal with her mental health issues. Right, And then she ran away from the abusive boyfriend again. <laughs> well, you tell her, I need six, is, six months because I have issues. Right? What could you tell her? I have, I have my own health, mental health issues. I got some mental health issues right now. And that means I need to stop fornicating for six months. You really should stop boning her until you marry her, but you shouldn't marry this bad girl. She's no good, right? And I hate to tell you that because I'm not in your shoes, right? You've got all the feelings about her, right? Not me. So I'm on the outside looking in, and sometimes that's a good thing, right? I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I don't have the warped sense that you got because I'm not having sex with her. Stop having sex with this woman and then ask yourself, after several months go by, what am I doing? Why am I dealing with this woman? You're a good looking guy. I see your picture, right? You're in this program recently. You're a good looking guy. You're a young guy. I don't know exactly what you do for a living, but it seems like you got your shit together. You have many, many options. You say you're 23 at the time, three years go by, so you're probably about 26 in your late 20s. Bro, you're just reaching your peak. You're just getting to the point where you are the prize, right? You can, you hold the frame. You decide who gets in and who gets out. You get your pick of the litter. Why an older woman? Why? Right? Why not choose a fresh young, right? Okay, 24. So you're still, you're still kind of young. Why not find a, a young, fresh girl with no experience? No, right? Like a virgin. I know that sounds crazy today, right? <laughs> that sounds so nuts, right? And go into the relationship with the idea, right? Number one, first of all, there's no reason to get in a relationship with any woman that you don't plan on making her your wife. That's my opinion. Why, right? So you can have sex entertainment, right? Well, you see where sex entertainment leads you. It leads you down this diabolical pathway where you can't think with your own thoughts uh, because you're, you're foggy from... Screwing. You're all fogged up. You're a young guy. You don't need to be hypnotized. That's really what you are. You're under the spell. You're under this woman's spell. And women know, women know this, but they don't verbalize it. They know, and this is why feminists, uh, this is why feminists always promoted fornication. Because they knew that if, if women could just have unrestrained sex, first of all, men would say, whoa, that's great, let's go. But when that happens, they then become 
the person that's in charge. They then become the leader of the relationship. Because when a man has sex with her, that's almost like a snare. It's a trap. And she's like, aha, I got him. Right? And that's not for all men, but a lot of men, I'd say most men get real weak with this woman. So, and listen, you know, in this age where men think, act, and behave a lot more like women, and it's all of us, myself included, I, I, look, I think back about 24-year-old year old Elliot, and I'm like, oof, I cringe sometimes. In the past, it had, been, it had been that women need to be conservative about their sex because women tend to fall and, uh, and become attached, right? The oxytocin and, you know, you, you know what happens, right? You have sex with a girl and then she becomes addicted to you and, like, she becomes crazy, it's no longer that way. The tables have turned, guys. The tables have completely freaking turned. Men now become obsessed with women that they have sex with. And the woman is like, eh, 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 Because eh. she knows the minute that she gets you and that you're an addict, that she could do whatever she wants. She could leave, right? She could leave and go to concerts with the other abusive boy. I tell you what, though, the abusive guy will always be imprinted on her. She will never be fully yours, right? A woman would have passed has all kinds of demons because every man she's been with imprints on her. And the more abusive the man was, the more of an imprint is on that woman, right? Women respond to emotions. It doesn't matter if it's positive or negative emotions. They respond to emotion. So if the man is making her angry, she, he gonna be running around in her head, living in her head rent free for the rest of her life. She'll be married to you 10 years from now. She'll be thinking about that guy, guaranteed. It happens to men too, right? It's not just women anymore. It's men too. Any person that you're with, not everybody, but whoever you with and you have a strong imprint with, that person stays with you for the rest of your life. This man, whoever he is, is going to be with her forever. Do you want to be sleeping with, in, in, home, in a home with, making a family with, bearing children with? A woman that has the imprint of another man on her soul? I want nothing to do with her. Used. Right? I know I sound crazy saying the things that I'm saying. And people are like, oh, Elliot, that's not realistic. Well, guess what? It was realistic before the sexual revolution, before we separated uh, marriage from family and also, uh, I'm sorry, sex from procreation. Right? That's what the birth control pill and, and abortion was all about. That's what the sexual revolution was all about. Up until the sexual revolution, we weren't doing this the way that we're doing it right now. Not to the degree that we are right now. So it's all diabolical. What I'm talking about is actually normal. What I'm talking about is the right way and it's the way it's been. The way we're doing things now, even though I sound crazy, the way we're doing things now is crazy. The way we're doing things now is crazy. The way we're doing things right now is the wrong way, even though it feels normal. Just because everybody doing it doesn't mean it's right. Doesn't mean it's normal. So I don't even remember where I'm going with that. My opinion is you can't drop her any faster. Drop her, get her out of your head completely. I know what I was talking about. Women would have passed. I would not want, especially a guy like you, I see you, you seem like such a good looking dude. I sh I'm sure you got your stuff together and you're young too, so you got some time. You're going to be all right. Don't settle for these these women with baggage. Don't settle for these old hags who are traumatized by men from the past. Get away from them. You don't need her. You have so many options. And, and right now, your door for options just cracked open. It's just cracking open. Over the next 10 years, and I know that sounds crazy, but hey, life is like a flash in the pan, bro. Trust me. Right? I was just 24. Flash in the pan. You're going to have all the options you want. Stop entangling yourself with these witches, with these demonic chicks. Stay away from her. She's old. You don't need her. She needs you. But she don't have time for her. What else? Well, anyway, like I said, I want to go on two, because there's, there's way too many... <laughs> Way too many rabbit holes I can go down with regard to this. Everything I pointed out as a red flag, there's principles behind why those things uh, are, are, they don't work and why they destroy relationships and why the reason why marriages and families don't work today. 
stay on your grind, bro. Keep becoming a stronger version of you. Keep building your value. Keep creating your frame as a man. Keep your options open and have standards, real standards for these women. Men, stop accepting these women with horrible pasts. That's where I was going with it before, right? Everybody's like, oh, but, you know, everybody should have experiences. Or oh, they say this to me. Oh, Elliot, what are you, intimidated by a woman who has experiences? No, I'm disgusted, actually, right? I don't want a woman that has been run through. I don't want a woman that has imprints on her. I want a clean slate. The cleanest slate I could possibly get is what I want with regard to a woman. I was reading this book. It's called um, Her Hand in Marriage. It's about courting. And he, he quotes from the Bible. He was, he was a pastor that wrote the book. And he was talking about how virginity is an inheritance. And that back in the day, you know, during the Mosaic law, uh, Moses writes, as God prescribes, that when a man marries a woman, if he was promised a virgin, and it turns out she wasn't a virgin, she gets stoned to death in front of her father's house. That's interesting, right? And it's about her father. Why didn't the father protect her? So they say she needs, she, if she, if it was a lie, if the, and plus the father sold the young man a lie saying, oh, this woman's a virgin because back then people knew. You don't, you, first of all, if you have abundance mentality, you don't have to settle for these sluts. You don't have to settle, right? Because every day there's a fresh young lady coming up that could be a potential wife, a nice clean wife. Um, and if you were sold, right, you were sold into this relationship, right? And most men, we don't know our woman's body counts. Nobody knows their woman's body counts. Men back in the day, they wouldn't get with a woman if he wasn't guaranteed she's a virgin. If this is not a virgin, then no, that's okay. You don't have to be a virgin. Women, you don't have to be a virgin, but I don't have to marry you, <laughs> right? If that's, what, if that's the kind of life you want to live, if you want to be a harlot, well, that's okay. Men will have fun with you. I'm sure you'll have fun, but no man is obliged to commit to and marry and start a life with a woman who's been trampled on. Yeah, right? This is a woman that has been trampled on, right? By abusive men. And if any woman ever tells you that she's been in an abusive relationship, run! Because that man will always be with her. She may even crave his abuse after being with you for a while. Because if you're a nice guy, this is so funny. I think Chris Rock made a joke about this. He was like talking about being a nice guy and why nice guys finish last. He was like, I'm a nice guy. But the problem with nice guys is that the girls don't want the nice guys. They want to be with the guys that are going to beat them up and, you know, be abusive to them, right? And it isn't until after they've been traumatized by the bad guys that they come to the nice guy. And finally, the nice guy, now after being traumatized, Seems, hey, well, you know, maybe I'll get with the nice guy. They get with the nice guy, the guy that's not there, has their best interest in mind and has no interest in abusing them. Now he has to deal with her like he's their psychiatrist. Now he's got to deal with all her trauma from all the other guys. The other guys had fun with her slapping her around, and now the nice guy's got to deal with her. Don't deal with him. Do not deal with him. This will all change, though, and I know this is, I'm going to stop apologizing for myself. When we weaponize chastity as men, all this stops. When we stop having sex with these women, all this stops. It's our fault because we fall into their snares. Stop fornicating. Not because the Bible says so, not because it's a high ideal and Elliot says so, but because it's impractical and it's the reason why relationships aren't working. Stop. And if you've been doing it, repent and stop. Right? And I'm talking to men and I'm talking to women, all of us. Because we're damaged goods as a result. That's my opinion on that. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students, where, among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you want to join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day, in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word King, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.